Fight! What's going on, guys? Welcome to the MKAU podcast. We're back with episode four of season five. It's been a little while since our last recording. Um, joined by our fearless leader, Sub Zero. Howdy. We've got a got a newcomer, White Dyer Tiger, who's a new reviewer with MKAU. We've Howdy, also got Breezy back again. What Howdy. have we been up to, guys? <laughs> we'll start with you, Breezy. We got Breezy back again. Uh been playing a bit of the cloud gaming stuff. With the new games that they've released, and yeah, such as so, um, hang on, up too slow. Ash, what have you been playing at the moment, bro? I had a look at like, yeah. Have a look, and we'll get we'll get Ash in. Ash, what have you been doing? Uh, apart from reviewing, which I'm absolutely uh, enjoying, uh, games that I've been actually been playing for fun. Um, and also just out of sheer curiosity as well, is um, Merge and Blade, uh, Loot Hero, um, and um, Wolfenstein Youngblood. So, I saw, Wolfenstein are good games. Uh, yeah, I saw Farquaad playing Youngblood a little, yeah, little, yeah, week, little week ago. Uh, yeah, about a week ago I saw him playing as well. I was... Uh, Going to ask him, you know, what he was doing because it is a pretty old game, and I, but I hadn't played any of those uh, Wolfenstein games. Um, so I've played both uh, um, New Order and uh, Colossus now. So, and of course, this is the third one that, you know, people have said has like killed the series, but um, yeah. Look, it was early a, I didn't mind it. It definitely wasn't the better of the three. Yeah, I, I couldn't get into Young Blood the same way as I got into New Order or Colossus, but. I can see definitely see Farquaad playing it because he's one of those like achievement hunters too. So he wants to get every single achievement known to man. So oh, well, that makes two of us then. Maybe <laughs> I, haven't got, I haven't got the time or patience to do it. <laughs> what do you mean playing, Subby? Um, but, uh, mostly just Siege. I haven't played anything. Played anything? No, just Siege. I haven't had a lot of time to play anything. So a little bit of Siege. Mm, that's about it. I haven't even yeah, started man. Diablo. I haven't um just came out. Oh, Street I played Fighter. a bit of Street Fighter. I did, I did. I played a bit on Friday night. Yeah, yeah. You're enjoying it? Yeah, it's pretty good. I only played a little bit. I played a little <laughs> bit of World Tour, which is kind of like their story mode, I guess. It's yeah, like I saw a, um, it's like I'm open, streaming it. <clears throat> it's like open world. It you know, fought in little on street street battles, which is Street Fighter, is it? You pretty much run around and you like talk to this guy, you go and collect something, take it back to him. You know how you like the title, you know, when you verse people, you go to like Japan and blah blah blah. You got you travel quite a bit backwards and forwards, so it's, it's not bad, but I haven't played, I've only played like hours. Is it is it a good change from like your generic click fight, like next fight or next chapter? Like you're actually sort of having to do something in between instead of just clicking next fight, watching a bit of dialogue and then going for it? Um, I soon, I quickly soon skipped or I just kept smashing the button to skip all the dialogue because it's just too much. Of it. So yeah. I still prefer the way Mortal Kombat does it, their story modes, to be honest. But fun little mode for Street Fighter to add. Pretty good. A little, yeah, little yeah. bit of a win instead of just, Here's a street fighter game. Just fight people, and we won't add any more content. To it. But yeah, I saw Redgrave. He was playing a uh, ranked game, it's an online game today. Yeah, I, ju- I jumped in his stream, and he was dressing his character up and looking at a weird camera angles and all that sort of thing, sort yeah, of stuff that Red does. Yes, I just went pretty generic, just dude. Yeah, with the beanie on, nothing special. Just wanted to get past it. It's pretty good. Pretty good customization. Actually. Um, which, which which is a good good thing, like because that's what people want. They want that. There's a lot to change. Sort of, yeah. Well, you can make your guy have no neck, <laughs> have a big chest, have little legs, long legs. So, I heard that um, you could actually good. customize the um, attacks that you can do by yeah, visiting can... the trainers as well. Yeah, that's right. So you can, um, as you visit, like Chun Li, for example, or whoever you level up your relationship. 
fighter and it unlocks new abilities and moves and stuff and then you can go in and customize your character to add what you've unlocked as you've so as you, if you've learned you can then yeah use it to um character's fighting style change your fighting style you can change it to like chun lee's fighting style or ken's fighting style that on the fly which is good so yeah, there's a lot with there's the relationship the relationships is it like turned into a dating sim no, 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 just like... Oh, is it just like, <laughs> yeah, no, you're going to train with me. Just your, and, like, like, your reputation, right. not not so much relationship. Like your rep. I get where you're coming from, Breezy, like, sort of, like, a persona sort of set up. Yes. Where mm -hmm. you actually you develop sort of, you know... You know I mean, that, yeah, but, um... Yeah, just your reputation, um, the people you... Okay. And eventually you come across all the streets. Which is the funnest part. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I, it's not too bad so far. I haven't actually had too much... I haven't played too many games lately. I've done a little bit of RP. Um, been smashing out the reviews and, well, since the last podcast, anyway. And I've uh, delved into FIFA 23 a fair bit. Um, really? Enjoying, get, enjoying getting back into that. I did an AI match the other day, which pretty much determines what your skill level is and i don't know why but it threw me in the top difficulty which was annoying um they're yeah, doing that in rocket league but not too many games lately unfortunately i've want to dive back into all the assassin creed games before mirage comes out but mm. see if i can make some time to do that i think syndicate so, was the only one i didn't finish see i uh, Assassin's Creed are probably like is easily my favorite gaming series, but they sort of lost me at like Origins the the sheer size of the map and having to travel from one side to the other just to get a quest done. Whereas like Assassin's Creed Two and Brotherhood and all that, it was like you're confined to the one city, but there was enough there to do and enough space to run that you still had to go to the quest, but you weren't having to adventure halfway across the world. Which they said that's going back to its roots in Mirage, so we shall see. So with FIFA 23, you said that it now judges you on the game so it can position you in a place where it's challenging. So wouldn't it be just be easy to throw the first game so then you could breeze through it? It's It starts you off with the easiest difficulty and the yeah. more tricks you do in passing and defense and everything, it just keeps boost, booting you up during the game. Um, I'm very so. I'm very competitive with my sport game, so I don't mind being in the top tier. But it it also makes if you jump online a lot easier because you sort of the AI difficulties the hardest ones like your standard online game. Um, so it's not not too bad. I enjoy it. <laughs> Talking about sorry, Freezy, yeah. did you work out what you were playing? So yeah, I've been I've played a bit of Slayer X Terminal Aftermath Vengeance of the Slayer. That's all one game. That was a map ball. So yeah, is that one game? <laughs> I've played a bit of Redfall. Um and yeah. That's it? Had a look at Wildways Empire 2. Someone reviewed that. I read Wildways. It's a it's a very good game if you're into those sorts of tycoon like running. There's a lot like own... Ash. Yeah, I've <laughs> been a lot of simulators lately. So there's a lot. There is and, a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not until I actually yeah started uh, reviewing that I actually realised like as I'm doing like research and that how many there are like the yeah the the simulator genre is. huge huge so i mean the thing with the simulator genre though is there's no limit you can literally simulate anything it's there's no limit to it it's just what how many people are going to want to actually pay to buy like pay to play the game yeah when, when i was researching um drill deal um oil tycoon there were um sort of very, very sort of touchy subjects that people were bringing up like you know oh what's next sort of thing so it's, oh, there, there's that many of them. It's not even like there's a bum simulator and a um, simulator. Yeah, lawn mowing oh. simulator. Lawn mowing simulator, truck stop simulator, bus simulator. 
Gara uh, the garage fuel stop one. Yeah, uh, yeah, whatever it's <coughs> called. That's what you learn. Is it so many games that you would not have when with this re reviewing, you would never have thought that or consider. Most definitely. I mean, I, I've always counted myself as quite an eclectic gamer, like playing lots of different genres, but I'm seeing stuff now and playing stuff now that where I'm like, where, like, where's this coming from? Um, but on top of that, like stuff that I, if I would have just like, just had a side glance at and gone, nah, and sort of moved on. So it's a lot of, those, it's a lot of those small indie games too, that you'll find throughout the year. At good <clears throat> that they put a lot of these triple A games to shame. Mm. I, I've said that to Ash before. Like the um, the a lot of I'm, I've been enjoying a lot more of indie games than the triple A games lately. There's more story to them. They're an actual original idea. They're not just keeping dredging up the same idea. And it's I suppose like in the well, last few years, there's been more resources made accessible to them that they can bring those ideas out. Mm. fully agree in fact the most recent review i've done um most definitely would uh, say that's nowhere near a triple a but yeah so close to a 10 out of 10 yeah, there's lots of games that are close to it but talking about games and all the other things going on in the world with triple a's and everything the activision and xbox merger that was something we heard about ages ago um which we thought was going to happen late last year and then has now been dragged out and then obviously the UK jumping in recently and putting a halt to that so now Microsoft are having to actually fight for what they want what are your, what are your sort of thoughts on the news you've been seeing about it Ash um, personally I was actually quite excited about the merger sort of um, you know but um after seeing sort of how Microsoft has handled its other mergers, i.e. like Redfall with Arcane Studios, yeah. this has got me a little worried now that if they're that hands-off with as they take on new companies, are we going to get, you know, sort of this lazy sort of backpedaling of stuff? I mean, Activision Blizzard, they've been sort of on the back foot with a lot of things and that they're starting to come good. But, I mean, you know couple of you know billions of dollars may just make them lazy so we know how far into development redfall even was before microsoft bought the bethesda i'm not uh, sure it, wasn't it was just, it wasn't just like microsoft bought them make this i'm pretty sure it was well and truly almost. it was it was definitely oh it would have been definitely almost done because i think the showcase was not that long after they bought bethesda so I don't. I dare say it would have been in the later stages of development. Yeah, I think they definitely could have handled it better, but I don't think it's entirely would have been. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, it could have been handled better. So, is this a lesson learned for them that if 100%. they do acquire Activision Blizzard? You know, that they will be a little bit more finger on the pulse because same thing. I mean, when they, if they do get this merger, um, you know, there are going to be, you know, games that are already in development with them that they then technically will have the control thereof. So. But they've, they, like Microsoft's always said too, like with the mergers and that, that they'll never stop the IPs from being on different consoles. Like they're not going to yeah. stop Call of Duty being on PlayStation. Like it's a sixty-eight point seven billion dollar deal. Mm. I, I would have thought. I suppose uh, the earlier mergers that they did were more of a walk in the park, and this one sort of stuffed them up a little bit. I mean, sheer size of Activision by itself, mm. yeah, and the look, amount of titles they I got. I mean, but do they have as many titles as Black Blizzard, uh, Bethesda? I don't think so. They got some bigger titles, you know, COD and Overwatch. And that's probably where they're looking at like it. They've though. got bigger like, titles, but I don't think they've got more titles. The major hiccup that is preventing them from finalizing the deal, and this blew me away when I found out about it, was essentially cloud gaming of all things. Um, you know, to say that cloud gaming is 
you know, that much of a, like an influence of actually holding back the merger, saying that they're going to monopolize on it. Um, to me, that's not how I sort of perceive that cloud gaming, you know, would work or it would be that much of a big deal. But according to the, uh, you know, UK, Britain, sorry, mostly, um, they're not going to actually, you know, go for it sort of thing. So, I mean, and even if they, it does go through at that point, I mean, what is Microsoft going to do with, you know, these various countries that decide that they don't want it? I mean, does that mean Microsoft would then sort of have to create like, like a segregation for these to actually get their products through? That's what I had. That's what I thought I read was that if they're just going to not release the games in the UK, then they're going to go forward with what they're doing. But they Which is a pretty big deal. It is, and then deal, especially yeah, if you're so. a COD player or Overwatch, you're not, you're not playing COD anymore. Mm. Which will it's... probably end up hurting him more in the long run. But I was keen on the idea initially because I thought, yes, Marcus, I'm so like I'm big on COD. I love COD, but so freaking over it. Same shit every. Day. I, was exci- the... I was excited, Marcus. Oh yeah, they. They seem like they want to like fix this. Like, no, we're not going to release one every single year. Skip the stuff. I thought, yes, they're going to fix the problem. But then all these other problems came. Call, Call of Duty needs to do that though. They need to stop making. Even if stop. they have like a two or three year break and then just come back with some absolutely amazing title that we'd all just sink our time into. Like, yes, we all go back year after year and play Call of Duty. It's just what we do. Yeah, but I think that's but, becoming less and less too because I'm not. I don't play it anymore. I finished the campaign on Modern Warfare I 2 and I haven't anymore. even played it. Yeah, I don't know. It's... So, yeah, there, there is a lot there that people are going to miss out on if it doesn't go ahead or if Microsoft just say the UK is not getting involved in it. That's, That's what gonna... I've said, Red. You're also talking not only about essentially one game as well. And with that, you know, that's it's not like it's one development company that's doing the game like it's you know four and and you know that's how they get them out each year because they spend the four years actually doing the stuff so they're doing other projects as well like it, it's not just that so i mean yeah they're saying that that in their sort of stuff that they talk about that that's what they're focusing on they're going that's the game that's going to monopolize it but if they then decide hey, you're not getting that game in the country. I mean, it's like cloud gaming. It's everything. So, like, anything that actually gets developed, you know, is not going to make it through. So. Which, which you're not wrong. It's not it's not only one game that's going to monopolize it either. Like, Blizzard's got World of Warcraft. That game's huge around the world. It's. I did forget about I, Blizzard. Blizzard's got, like, yeah, um. Yeah, the WoW and oh, the big... Di- oh, Blizzard's got bloody Diablo. Diablo, yeah. Yep. Talk about. I mean, how, how would you feel? One of the you know big franchises that's been around for decades. Oh, sorry, you can't have it in your country. Yeah. So, mm. You know, all, all because of cloud. So, because that that's pretty much what they're hung up on. So, um, but yeah, ultimately, like like I said, I was all for it. I was very excited, but to see sort of you know the sticky wicket, so to speak, that's holding it up is actually quite concerning. So, unfortunately, it's going to be dragged out a bit further now. Like they don't go into their first hearing until July twenty fourth, so there's still a. It's going to, I dare say we'll probably be looking at it again next year, early next year, by the time everything's been done properly or they come to some sort of agreement of what they can do, which is unfortunate, but. I suppose it's just what it is. Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space. <laughs> no, no doubt it'll get posted on the MKA Twitter when we uh, hear about it. <laughs> I, I actually, uh, when, when I was doing the topics up for the podcast, one that sort of came out to me big time, and it was, I don't know if it's something that would affect us in the future with reviews and stuff, but obviously AI has become a massive part in technology these days. Like you, I've seen const, constant TikToks of people using the new AI generator on Photoshop. I know, that looks cool. It, it does look cool, which takes away... All you need to do is have a picture of something basic and you write in, I want a lake with the reflection and a rock in the behind it, and you've got it. Like the, It takes out the... 
Like back then you would have had to pay arm and leg to get someone to com- like make that picture and make it try and look that nice. Whereas it's just done. But like the, well, obviously the topic was chat GPT, which is becoming a big, big thing in the world that a hundred people or millions of people are using is, and obviously like we, we do reviews. Do you think it could one day take away the need to have reviewers or do you still think it's going to have need to have that personal touch to it? Because obviously the chat GPT can't play the game. No, I don't think um, it can't play the game and you're not, it's not writing from its experience coming up with a bunch. Yeah, but I could, not that I do, but you could always go in and say, I, well, you'll know if you'll know if it's Jack GBT it, it, way better still, than my review. It's still it'll still get flagged for plagiarism. <laughs> it's that was something I discussed with my brother in regards to um Chat GPT specifically about actually writing on you know sort of stuff. And he said that uh, the university he works for, Chat GPT is pretty much hardlined as plagiarism. It is, yeah. So, well, it's not your own. It's not your own words. You're literally writing into it. Write me a paragraph about a cat and be descriptive, and I'll write you a descriptive paragraph about a cat. Like it's not, it's not your own work. You don't need to think about it. Correct, and it is actually deriving that stuff. But I mean, with what you're saying though, as being a learning algorithm that it is, it's AI. It's going to learn. So I mean, the more reviews you do, so like as an example, I've done 16 reviews in the three months that I've been here. Holy. But yeah, <laughs> it adds up quick. Um, so, oh, you know, with that on the internet, I could actually tell Jack, Chat GBT, this is, you know, look at this writing, this is how I write, and that. And then I get given a game and then say, right, now write me a review that, you know, about this game. And it could write the review for me if it wanted by using what I've actually, what it can actually read of my work on there. So, what? One thing I'd love to see one day, because technically it's still using my work, it's just doing the work for me. One thing I'd love to see, like I I haven't even looked at chat GPT, I'm not interested in it, but one thing I'd love to see is actually grabbing a review and putting it into it and saying, make this more descriptive. Like you've never, they've never, like chat GPT has obviously never seen the game. Does it pick up? Does it grab <clears throat> snippets of like all these websites to try and create this or? I'd imagine it just changes what you read. And written a little bit better than what it is, I guess. That's pretty much what it does. It, it searches the internet and it grabs the bytes of information that you are requesting and puts it into its own words. So, and, if, and obviously with anything that you tell it to do. So, if you said take this and make it more descriptive, it would take it, put it into its own words, and use a more descriptive like format in order to say that. The problem with it is that because it's still in its infancy, it gets what's actually called hallucinations. So what it does is as it's checking this information, it actually looks and goes, right, say you met a particular celebrity at one point and it happens to be listed somewhere, it will hallucinate and say, well, if you've met this person, the chances are that you have actually met the Prime Minister and it would actually put something like that in there. So, and they classify that as hallucinations. So, but obviously as the AI grows and becomes smarter, Obviously, those hallucinations will become less and less. It was it was interesting sort of reading about when I was sort of looking into the topics, and I'll say this in quotation marks: the industry experts, if you want to call them that, have said like compute like people shouldn't be worried about computers taking over or taking your jobs. They should be worried about the people that can control the computers taking the jobs of the people that don't know how to use it right, because they're they're, they're saying that it the. Um, Chat GPT can take out the four, the four Ds of work: the the dirty, the dull, the difficult, and the dangerous, and which it does take out that whole sort of aspect of it. But again, it also takes away that personal touch of what someone's writing. Hundred percent agree with that. That yeah, I mean, technology is advancing, but yes, if you were going to use technology for nefarious means, you're going to end up with you know stuff being done, you know, illegally, whatever. So. Um, but I mean, the other way of looking at it too is like with this advancing the way it is just for us as reviewers, like taking away our job, what about sort of a bigger picture? So let's say, let's use Ubisoft as an example. They're having difficulty actually getting games out that people are interested in. 
what happens if they fire all their writers and then get Jack GPT to actually do the writing for them? And so, yeah, that, that's the thing too. Like that, I suppose to a degree, an author doesn't have to think of a book anymore. They put an idea into Chat GPT and it can write a book for them. Mm. I don't know if there's costing and stuff. Like I said, I've never actually looked at Chat GPT. I don't know if there's costing and stuff behind it, but there's, like I said, it takes the thinking thinking out of things. Like I. There's some things in AI I really like, like the Photoshop thing I mentioned before. That's a really cool idea. Yes, it sort of takes away the need of getting a graphical designer in, but like I don't know to what extent you could do like use it. So I don't know if Lance could load up something like a YouTube template and say, put a cool border around this and put this on the forefront and put the logo there and if it will do it. That I don't know if it's at that stage yet, but that's something yeah. that you could probably do. <clears throat> down the track yeah i don't yeah. i don't have it i don't have the update to mine just yet but i haven't done any updates to photoshop in a while but <clears throat> i'm thinking about using it to maybe generate thumbnails see how it goes with generating thumbnails for youtube videos i'm shit <laughs> I'm so sh i was thinking about giving it a go because i've seen a lot of people talk about it generates pretty ca eye-catching thumbnails quite quite well with a bit of information i'm waiting for i'm waiting for the people to generate these remarkable photos which they are the ai on there is really well done i'm waiting for them then, and then sticking them on somewhere like fiverr or whatever and saying oh we we made this picture you can buy the rights to using it or something like that for someone that doesn't have a photoshop or whatever isn't that nfts I was going to say that's getting towards the NFT market. Well, which they could do. Which they could do. Hey. There's nothing saying don't put a cartoon rabbit on there with a pair of glasses on. They would probably do it. Well, either way, um, they'll find a way to monetize it. That's for sure. Oh yeah, I mean, you'll, that's, you'll see a lot of people what? talking about Fiverr. You'll see a lot of people now use it. Well, but just, just I'd imagine making money. I'd imagine a one way of them, like per. Like for say you want to create an image, it each loading is like a dollar, or each each word you use is like fifty cents. Yeah, I think people will so use it. it. Like what Breezy's saying, people might like, say, "Hey, I can," because people might not have a Adobe subscription. Breezy might be out mm. here saying, "Hey, I can," generate. you know, being upfront that he's got it. I can generate you some stuff for a dollar an image or something. There'll be people doing it. Yeah. Give me 50 bucks for, for 50 their images. You know? and that, that's the, I mean, as scary as it is and as early as it is in sort of development, if you want to say that, AI, that, that's the beauty of AI, artificial intelligence. It's just going to continually getting better and continually get smarter, which is so, yeah. like something I'm keen, I'm definitely keen to see where like the Adobe part of it goes because. I didn't believe it when I first saw it the other day. I was like, nah, nah. And then I kept looking into it. I was like, okay, this is actually pretty cool. But It's cool, but it is going to put a lot of people out of work, graphic designers, and architects, and mm. sort of stuff like. It, it will it will do that. And like Ash was saying before, with the um, there's nothing saying chat GBT can't take a rate of writer's job one day. Like, but what are they going to put down for their, well, in the credits? Like screenplay or story written by Chat GPT, like. <laughs> and then when you think about it, like having an AI do the work, you know, for them, it's you know it's going to cost less. So, you know. which I I honestly won't mind seeing if they did try it out one day for a story of a game because it could probably be pretty interesting mm -hmm. compared to some of the stories of games you're playing lately. But yeah, I don't know. I, it's definitely one of those early early in stage things. Hopefully we don't get to the point where we got Skynet. Oh. <laughs> we'll get there eventually, bro. We'll get there eventually. It'll anyway, start off. It'll start off as iRobot, then end up in Terminator. Once our once our organics have used our uh, purpose, though, so, yeah, Skynet will become. We'll just uh, show them the parts that it does not succeed for iRobot, because. Yeah, we they're have already that they're one. already doing it with robots. So like, there's it's it's finished now. I think it start, stopped a few years ago, but there was an art piece in Europe somewhere, I believe it was, 
and all it was was a arm with like a scoop on the front of it and it had hydraulic oil leaking out of it and this thing was that it was programmed to try and keep itself alive by sc- scraping the hydraulic oil in and I, it went on for years and years and then it ended up just leaking out and then you could see the robot was actually getting tighter and tighter of trying mm. to keep itself alive and it ended up just stopping because it leaked all its oil but they're already doing it with robots like it's it's only a matter of time until you've got one in your house bringing you dinner and whatnot. Hell yeah. I can't <laughs> wait, bro. Hey, robot, can you pass me my dinner, please? Yeah, Sammy, if you're doing a stream and you see his robot walking behind him. Here, sir. Hello, master. I have your nuggets. Yeah. Cook how you like it. Do you want a napkin, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Talking, uh, sort of going back off our Blizzard conversation before, Diablo 4 has been out for a couple, oh, sorry, Early Access has been out for a couple of days for whoever got the deluxe edition, Premium, I believe it was. I think it was called, yeah. something, um, yeah, I don't know what the edition's called. But yeah. yeah. And I believe the standard edition drops tomorrow for anyone else that's pre-ordered it or, or buying it. Has anyone sort of played any apart from like the beta? No, I have not. Yet? No. Like zero arrows. <laughs> Not a game I'm into. Who has? Aaron it... has. Did you say Aaron has? No. Oh, what did you say? No, I've, I've played absolutely none. Zero hours. Oh, zero hours. Yeah. Yeah, I've played nothing. You haven't yet. played any Diablo. Wow. I've played, I've uh... played Diablo 1, 2, and 3. Um, um, 3 um, unfortunately broke me with um, the unable to log in issues. Yeah. Uh, so I found Diablo 3 story got a little bit too weird for me. So consequently, I haven't had the same desire to want to get it like I did for Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. No, that, that's fair. It is, it is one of those stories that is a more dark, twisted sort of story. And it's one of those things you not necessarily constantly getting dragged into the story either. You've got to kind of keep yourself enthused in the story because it is not, it's not the quickest story in the world. Um, oh, look, if you go back to a, like the dark and twisted theme of like the first and the second, um, I'd definitely be a lot more interested in actually, you know, having a look at it because the third one I just found it just kind of lost its way. It just felt like I was just going through the motions. Well, honestly, like I've played them all. I, I love Diablo, but I think... From I haven't actually played for since early access. I've got a copy. I just haven't played it. I haven't had time. But the the beta I played, it played a lot like two. It felt a lot like two. They sort of taken the stuff that we didn't enjoy with three, and then added two into the good stuff of three, and then made this awesome game. Which I haven't seen any bad reviews about it. Apart from apparently there was a glitch with some the hardcore mode. Like you die in hardcore mode, just permadeath. Um, apparently there was some glitch and a couple of big note streamers had a big whinge about it saying, oh, we, we were trying to do a, I think it was a race to level 100 or something like that. And obviously they got perm kills so they didn't make it there. But that's the only downside I've heard so far. But like I said before, the game's not public until tomorrow sort of thing. So that, that's something that they can actually fix. So it's, it's, that's not, you know, something that's technically, you know, broken per se. It was interesting though, playing like the beta, Playing an alpha or beta, you expect bugs. Like it's just what it is. And obviously, when they were first doing the serv- um, stress test of the servers, there was huge queues. It just happens. That's what it is. Everyone wanted to play it at the same time. But like actually playing the game, I didn't find any bugs. I didn't. Or, I mean, I didn't encounter any. I'm not saying that no one else has, but like it was a very well developed game for what it was. And then they've obviously had that time in between then and now to get out the, those kinks that they probably found, I dare say, with the stress test. Yeah, I <clears throat> I read that um, the launch was quite good. The early access launch was quite good. I think PS5 players had a little bit of license issues, like come up with some licensing error initially, but they sorted it out really quickly. So from what I understand, it was quite a quite a good launch so far. Do you think you'll end up getting it? Me, I'll get it, yeah. yeah. I don't know what I'll though, but I will get it. Well, yeah, I've got got it on Xbox at the moment. I'll probably get it on PC. I've always played Diablo on PC, so I'll jump back on the PC. I probably will grab it on PC. 
just that sort of game. Just... Yeah, it's, it... it's cross play, so it doesn't matter. Like, is it going to matter what platform you get it on? Apparently, got cross save and cross play. It's yeah, got cross play and cross save, but if you buy it on Xbox, you can't download it on PC on the Xbox app, which is annoying. Um, so you, if you do it on PC, you need to buy it through Blizzard's Blizzard. launcher. But couldn't you, if you've say got um, Xbox Ultimate, couldn't you not then stream it to your PC anyway? Uh, quite possibly. I haven't tried yeah, doing it yet. Sure. <laughs> mm, something to try. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I might have to give that a go before I go buy it. But yeah, um, mm. do you think you'll get it, Ash? I um, my friend asked me the other day about it because it's one of the first games that we actually discussed when we first became friends was Diablo, and um, yeah, he asked me if I was going to get it, and um, same thing that I told him. I said. If people are getting it and want me to play with them, I would, but I'm certainly not, wouldn't be buying the game for myself. One thing that conf- I wouldn't say confused me, but upset me a little bit with the develop or oh, Blizzard is obviously so with a lot of big drops in games now, you've got Twitch drops that's just part of the games. And that's a game where you can get away with doing Twitch drops, which is fine. That's, you, if you're busy, you can load up someone's stream, walk away, come back, claim it, and then walk away again sort of thing. It's, that part doesn't matter. But there's one thing that they did say was you can go into an eligible Twitch streamer's chat, gift them two subs, and you get a mount, which I don't agree upon so much. It should be anyone that's streaming and has drops enabled. You should be able to jump into their stream and do that. I don't know how they're sort of policing that sort of aspect of it. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's only Blizzard partners. If you're a Blizzard partner or whatever, which Blizzard partner, you know, a Blizzard partner that streams, just like Ubisoft or, you know, Ubisoft partners or Call of Duty partners, those Would people make- get, they, they have special drops. It's the same thing, but to have to spend money to give to them is probably a bit, a bit yeah. much, but. I can understand maybe one. One one sub would get you maybe the mount, and then the second sub might get you a cool skin or something for the mount, and like give you. But like, I mean, a sub doesn't cost that much at the end of the day. It's what ten bucks to twenty dollars to get a mount, which is a lot. For actually, a mount. That, it's a lot now that I think about it. But if they added that sort of incentive, there's probably be more people to do it. Like, don't get me wrong, people are going to do it regardless. It's just what people do when those sorts of things happen. But like, they've got the. They've got the um, drops running from tomorrow till the 2nd of July, so they're going to be running for over a month. But each week they're going to be changing the drops. So it's going to be one of those things where it could be a good good strategy for them to try and get more people wanting, like viewing Diablo 4 to get the view counts up. It's only, don't a, know it's what... only a mount for the gifted. Subs. Yeah, the, the other stuff, the, the other, other drops. for everybody. Yeah, weapon skins and or like stuff for your inventory and that sort of stuff like that. They're all coming in the drops, which anyone can do. Like, if you're streaming and you have drops enabled, you can get the drops. It's just that they've only sort of locked it down to like what you said, the Blizzard partners. Yeah, I'd imagine the... it's. I haven't looked into it completely, but I imagine it's partners. Or... Anyone, they they need a... anyone they've decided is a part of the Diablo. To me, it seems like if they limit it to a small amount, it's just like... Because, like, there was the um, Hogwarts Legacy stuff. They had it on one channel, and it was time-zoned, to one, and it was only went for one hour each time they streamed it. Like, you had one hour... It, no, two hours of it, and but that just, like... Yeah, you two hours a... for one time zone. Yeah, if you aren't, if you aren't, if you can't plan that you're awake. It's yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. And not everyone can have like a stream open, because like there's people that are like got jobs that they if everything is monitored and if it's not their w- related to their work, they would they have a possibility of 
being told, yeah, you're going to be sent home. That's when, when, when they did that, happens. when they did that Hogwarts one, I just left the tab open before I went to work. Yeah. That way, if it came on, and it's, it's like, uh, it's not, I mean, I don't know how many Blizzard partners there are. There's probably a heap of them, but. I think for the at least the first month, there's going to be that many people streaming the Diablo. It's not you're not going to miss out on drops or miss out necessarily if you want the mount. You should be able to find a Blizzard partner, and they'll be up to on top of the list because people will be jumping in there to gift the subs to get the mount just to say they have the mount. Because it might be one of those things that you can only get in the first month. Mm. It'd be it'd be interesting to see, but it's definitely. I haven't played it yet just for the fact I know I don't have time at the moment and I know for a fact if I start playing it, I won't stop playing it. So <laughs> I've got Wednesday off, so I might dive into it then. So but with those times things, do you think that um, down the track, once they obviously implement the battle pass and the cash shop, whether that sort of stuff is actually then going to become available for a price? Uh, usually truth drops are... You'll never see them anywhere else again. That's what makes. That's what brings people the incentive for people to want want to get them because you'll never get them again. Okay. Like with the Sea of Thieves ones, they drop them some random times, and you just and you got to go at those times. And yeah. That that's what like, that's what the big incentive is, and like I said, that's that would be Blizzard's idea too with Twitch that. The first month, they, everyone's going to want to be streaming. Everyone's going to be wanting watching it if they're playing the game to get the drops. And people watch drops to not even they don't even, might not even play the game, but still get the drops just to have them sitting there. So it's not a people just have that fear of missing missing out on something. So they'll, yeah, they'll get the drop. And I play the game. It's like, I, it's I like... do it. I open up. I open up. I don't, I don't even. Some games I don't even play, but I don't want to miss Twitch drops. So I'll just open a stream for the game. I don't. Even... Maybe one day I'll play it. I've got it. That's that's like um, well, Fortnite, for instance. They might put a skin out and say, oh, this is limited edition and it will only be out for 24 hours. I can bet you top dollar that everyone's going to be in there buying that skin because they'll say, oh, we'll never release this again. They'll probably release it in six months' time again, but it it but brings back. everyone into it. Yeah. Like like they did the... um, They gave out the Shenron and... And the stuff for Dragon yeah, in the Ball quest. Z. Yeah, in the quest. Yeah, they said that it was only going to be for the quest. P- appeared in the item store quite a few months later. Yeah, that kind of stuff annoys. Yeah, it, you you work your ass off to get something, and then you and then they just buy <laughs> it. Just it. <laughs> but at least you, well, the Star Wars stuff that they just had. That I imagine they're going to be going here. Here's a Clone Trooper pack. Oh, I've seen, I, I've seen like, one about 10 times now. Yeah, they had like a clone troop, they had Darth Maul in there as well. They're going to be like, oh yeah, we're going to sell them for like like um, 1,500 1, V-Bucks. And you'd be like, I had to work my ass off and pay for a thing separately to get him and now I can get him just as is and I only wanted him but I had to pay for a whole thing just to be able to get him before yeah, I'm angry crazy <laughs> yeah it's getting a bit touchy about Fortnite <laughs> yeah, no idea. I, uh... I mean like you put in hard work you want to be feeling like You've accomplished something. And then they just go, oh, yeah, we're just going to give you this for something a lot more that would have that would have saved you time. It's like, why? It'd be valid. Like, I, yeah. yeah, I, I do like hate Like, they that. haven't done it for everything. It's been they, times like, where they haven't... Yeah, there's been times where I've just sat there and spent hours trying to do something, finally get it, stupid hours of the morning. And then, yeah, for them to bring it out later, you could just buy it. Oh, I would have just bought it. Sit there like for six hours trying to get something. I spent $2 or $5 and got it. Like, they haven't done it for everything. Like, they haven't done it with, like, Battle Pass skins. And they haven't done it with, like, 
well, from what I noticed, um, Superman one, that, like, I did a bit of the quest, I managed to only just get the Superman skin, but they didn't, but they haven't released anything for that, and I'm like, could they release stuff so that, so that ones that weren't able to finish be able to do stuff? Because, like, I see both sides. Yes, it was, there was hard work into it, but there's also, like, not everyone would have been able to do it because, like, sweats and all that. You're a sweat. <laughs> You're <a> sweat. <laughs> you go running up and try and do random yada, yada, yada. And uh, I'm just no, like, no, no, no. where the what hell are you, Sully? <laughs> anyway, on, on that note, <laughs> this, uh, this next topic's uh, one close to home with MKU as MKU first started off as a Mortal Kombat fan site. Back in Mortal Kombat 9 days, I believe. Mm. Back when it was starting. Yeah. I don't know. 2012? Long time ago. Oh, back he's going to the... Google it. Back when the R rating was still... Oh, he didn't have free. one, yeah. Yeah, didn't have an R rating back then. Um, obviously... I'm pretty sure it was 2012 or something. And, 2011. Uh, 2011. Jeez. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you're right. It is twenty. And now, uh, so obviously, why didn't we get anything for a celebration of ten years? For what? They did. They gave you a game. Years? <laughs> they gave you a game to play. <laughs> did they? You're right, there, Breezy. You look very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I am pretty comfortable. <laughs> anyway, carry on. So obviously, so obviously, MK has turned into something a bit bigger than a Mortal Kombat fan site over the years. But uh, obviously they've announced Mortal Kombat 1 coming out later this year, I believe, from what I've seen. Yep. September 19, 29? <laughs> I think it's 19, something like that. It's got a 9 in it. It's just like, giggle it! Well, Sully, you can, uh, you can tell us the sort of the base story behind Mortal Kombat <clears throat> 1. Very, well, we all don't, I don't know the details of the story but it's not a sequel it does somewhat follow on from the last game where by what's his is his um fire god Liu kang beat uh shang Tsung and chronica it's his own timeline so he created a completely new mortal kombat timeline. nothing to do with the original three games nothing to do with the last three games anything in between None of the story makes has nothing to do. Completely just clean slate. Anything goes. They can create whatever they want. So more or less a soft, soft reboot of the series. <laughs> like a reboot, I guess. Yeah, but it's not rebooting the same story. No, which would be which would be good for. I mean, I've been playing Mortal Kombat forever, but the it'd be good for anyone that hasn't really played it before and doesn't know the full story of the characters much, really yeah. coming if into it. If they only know kind of what happened in the last game, that's enough. Now, it doesn't matter what Sub-Zero, it doesn't matter what happened with them, it doesn't, it doesn't none of it makes sense. Like, there could, Sub-Zero and Mortal um, Scorpion could be best. We don't know. So, so obviously, Blake, Jake, Reptile, well, we don't know who's. <laughs> yeah, Breezy, yeah, reptile, reptile could be somebody's pet. Who knows? I don't. We don't know. So obviously they dropped the trailer. Was it a teaser trailer or no? It wasn't a full trailer, was it? It was just a teaser trailer. Uh, it was a announcement. Well, yeah, it was a proper announcement, announcement trailer. Trailer. Which I mean, I didn't stay up until midnight the night before to watch it, but I watched it the next day, and I was, I was definitely keen to. Can't get my hands on it straight away. <laughs> Keep in mind, these trailers are all CG. They're not in-game engine whatsoever. So they're designed, obviously, to announce the game, to sort of hint at what to expect gameplay. -wise. When you see them do the fatalities of the trailer, it's not going to look like that, but it gives you an idea on how graphic it might be or... I, I'm I'm definitely interested to see what they can do with Mortal Kombat in in current generation. Like the Mortal Kombat 11 looked awesome as it was. Yeah, like I still play MK11. Yeah, it, it was a, well. it's so good. It was it's a great looking game, and the fatalities did look sick. 
but they've got obviously current generation of console with the amount of power behind those they can they can make some pretty gruesome stuff happen which i'm definitely down for the gruesome the better yeah they've still got a limit they can't yeah they can't go (laughs) they've still got their their r-rated limit they can't that's Which why sucks. MK11, yeah. it's graphic, but it's R2D blood stuff. Like, they get away yeah. with it. Okay, Which I, I dare say will probably happen with this one yeah, too. But they've... It, it would be good, to, like I said, for anyone that hasn't played Mortal Kombat before to come in and play this because it's, it's a fresh fresh series, if you want to call it that. That's a, like I said, a soft reboot of a game that's been around forever. Yeah, know, a lot of those people that like love forever. the series but don't have any idea on the story... From way back in 1994 or 95 when it first came out. Like, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You don't need to know. Just... And like you were saying earlier, the, the, we, none of us know what's going to happen. The, sub, like you said before, Sub-Zero and Scorpion could be best friends, which I really hope they're not because I like the rivalry between them. But like the, it's going to be definitely interesting. And I think I was reading they've got Beta testing in June. Yeah, that... I got accepted into some technical t- online testing. That was it, technical testing, technical not beta testing. testing. Yeah. Hmm. But to circle well, back to the release date, since you're talking dates, yeah, September nineteenth. Nineteenth. Yep. It was had a nine in it. Pretty soon, it's not that far away. Yeah, but we're, we're, if you think about it, it's actually not that far away. It's what two months? <laughs> no, three months. We're in up. We're in June now, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but we're halfway through the year. I think I think it's come to that it's come to that stage now with games though that developers need to announce the game and then have it out within a couple of months, or people just lose interest. This one was a bit of a special case because they haven't been able to announce it with the whole Warner Brothers Discovery merger that happened. Like everything was just put on hold until the merger. They had to push. They had to push the announcement for a little bit though, didn't they? Because there wasn't there a bunch of leaks rolling around. I'd read somewhere there was no, a bunch I of leaks online. Always... Apparently, no, I think Boone was Ed Boone was teasing the announcement for a while now, but yeah, the leaks did pretty close to. De- definitely, I mean, everyone likes fighting in Mortal Kombat and ripping each other's heads off, but I'm definitely keen to see what they're going to be doing with the story as well, um, and how much further they can open the series up more because obviously it's a brand new story. They could go another 11, 11 games if they really wanted to. And Mortal Kombat's one of those games that aren't ever going to get old. I, just hope, I hope ever. they do what they did with 11 because they kept that alive for, I think it's the longest living MK date where they kept really all new DLC for story, character packs, they got three or four different characters. Like they just kept pumping out content for that up until like six to 12 months ago. I think they kept people enthused too with the fact like they were adding characters like Rambo and Terminator and that to the game yeah. where people can, oh, sick, I can I can kick Terminator's ass as John Rambo, which you wouldn't wouldn't think about, which was a fun, fun twist to the game, I suppose. It takes away from the original characters. They theme all their packs. So they had like a horror pack with, you know, in one MK, they had like a movie pack. The last one, you now there's rumors of it being superhero pack this time around. Ooh, they've got like, uh, what's the guy's name? Which uh, peacekeeper, peacemaker? What's his name? John Cena. Yeah, what's his character? Peace, peacemaker. Uh, peacemaker. Anyway, peacemaker. him and um, a couple of others from TV shows, like um, Homelander. Homelander. Yep. They're rumored to. Be- which would be pretty Some of the cool. Characters. <laughs> what does everyone think about the name, though? MK1. It makes, it makes sense. sense. I like to a point, uh, yeah. Uh, but not just no, Mortal I mean, Kombat, just go back. Like, they can't really use Mortal Kombat well, again. They did it back in the beginning. They did it in number nine. Yeah. I guess they had no choice. I suppose they could have could have got away with it just for the fi- like the the fact that it's its own new game, but they they've gone to one, which I mean, you could say it's like because it's first a new story. Or... Kind of X, like Xbox One. <laughs> I 
I mean, everyone's just going to call it Mortal Kombat anyway. Like, you don't, you talk to people and you say, oh, yeah, I was playing Mortal Kombat. You, you don't say, I'm playing MK11. What? Yeah. You're playing, you're playing number nine or you're playing the OG? What are you playing? It's just confusing. <laughs> if they could have called it like Mortal Kombat, you know how they did the Mortal Kombat Armageddon or Perception? Like, they could have yeah. given it another name, like Mortal Kombat something. Reborn or something. <laughs> yeah, Reborn. Mortal Kombat yeah. Reborn. Um, I could have went down that route, but it's de- it's definitely going to be one of those games. That I think the the pre orders will definitely be up high with it, and people will be playing it. <clears throat> I'm annoyed that the collector's edition didn't come out anywhere other than the US. Yeah, I did see that. What did they say? Why? Or... No idea. Losing no money. idea. Everywhere missed Subby... out except for the US. Piss. Subby would have been all over that. I tried to look at every site possible. Get it over here. Must must be time to uh, reach out to one of the American MKAU members and get them to get it for you and post it over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I do know Rigo that he works at NetherRealm. Be their um, previous community manager before well, the current one is. I don't know what he does, but they can't. They don't really. They don't have any power in the studio themselves to give out collectors a more of a Warner Brothers thing. Maybe we need hopefully. to get someone in Warner Brothers. I don't know. Maybe we'll I... get lucky and they will release them. Closer to the... Hopefully MK just oh, gets a nice PR kit, eh? <laughs> stop... I used to stop doing really cool PR kits. I can't get them anymore. I, I've had, I have noticed that with a lot of games recently. They like the... You used to pre-order games from EB and you get like these sick looking statues or something with the game and they seem to have sort of vanished off the face of the planet, the old statues and everything. Because they're digital. People are just buying them digital, so they're not doing collectors. Mm. Which is I'm disappointing like... for people like you who have half a million statues sitting in your living well, room. Well, yes and no. It just means I don't have to buy them, I guess. <laughs> I don't have anywhere to put them. That's probably yeah, a good I thing. Know you... I know you gave me... Uh... Mass Effect Andromeda. Where is it, Brizzy? Where is it? it? Underneath the computer. Don't you touch that camera, bro. (laughs) (laughs) You'll just see 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 lines going across Brizzy's camera if he drops it. I don't mind. Some of the collector's editions were pretty cheap stuff. (laughs) They're not the great. I used to collect all the Assassin's Creed ones, but they... I've got them. a couple of those sitting in my garage. I don't. Stop, stop oh, I, I don't buy them anymore. They're just a waste of space. You know, it, I mean, back then you didn't necessarily get anything more with the game anyway. It was more just a, you're paying for a statue and maybe a steel book. I don't mind the digital pre-order stuff. Like Street Fighter, I got has cool um, yeah skins and costumes, and characters, that kind of stuff. I like. If the With- art console, I got a console release. I got like. A box with a book with actual like things for the like the each of the animals that they had out for the start mm. and like from the book that they have you find the stuff on in the game, which I like, I like was artwork. really nice and a map and a necklace that was really nice. Yeah, like, I like, it was a I like cloth map. So yeah, and like, it was really good stuff. Even the box itself was like, oh, it, I can find this in the game. It's like immersive. Well, there was that Dying like, Light, Dying Light Two, where they had the map, and you had to actually they gave you a torch as well, the mm-hmm. torch. People didn't even know that you use it on the map. It's secret locations. I think it was. Uh... I am. Um... I can't remember if it was Black Black Ops One or Black Ops Two. I was still to my day to this day. I like, have the coolest thing getting that RC car with it. Black Ops One. Yeah, that that was probably by far the my prestige favorite. Editions. They were always the yeah. best. Night vision goggles. The fridges were good. Mm. Yoga dog fridges. Yeah, they don't do cool stuff anymore, do they? Like that? No, no. <laughs> I don't know if it's just because they're not allowed to, or they just don't. Oh, uh, no, Nintendo does a few stuff. Like they did with, they did stuff with the Arceus, Legends Arceus, but like none of the, the good stuff came to Australia. They don't even do like, 
consult. But imagine if they did a Mortal Kombat 1. It's a limited edition. I'd buy that. Mm, the last limited edition uh, console I bought was, yeah, the God of War one. I just, yeah, you're right. I, I didn't even realize until now that you're right. They actually don't have them anymore. The last, no, I used the 360 in the Xbox One days, they did a lot of them. And mm. we're, what, three years in the Series X and they've only done one, the Halo Infinite edition. But they're, they're, doing, they're doing all these bundle packs now that you're, you know, oh, buy the Diablo Xbox Series X, but there's nothing yeah, bundle packs. special about the about Xbox. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, back, I want to buy a, a Diablo yeah. themed Xbox okay. that no one like. Diablo themed Xbox would be sick. But even, like even like you said, Mortal Kombat that would be want sick. Want to sell a console? Want to sell what? hardware? Just make a limited one. Yeah, hundred percent. People buy them even though they don't use it. You know how many consoles I got here that I don't use? <laughs> Just sitting in the carpet. I've got every limited edition <laughs> Xbox One they ever released. And we'll make sure we put Subby's address in the comments on YouTube so you can go and pick yourself up a nice Xbox. I even were buying the PS4s, but then I started selling them off because they're not, they're not that good. Limited. They were over the year. There's one guy I follow on Twitter that does, I mean, I don't know how many of them actually get made into consoles and controllers, but Popart, he does some pretty cool looking stuff. You can order off his website. You can order yeah, off okay. some of those. If you go to his website, you can order. Well, on that note, that's our that's our topics for today. Nice. If if you um if you haven't already, guys, make sure you go and look at Juiced Energy. We'll put a link in the description for that one. Um, if you use code MK, you can score yourself ten percent off, I believe. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, make sure you uh, share the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to or watching it on. And uh, for all our updated news, you can go to MKU's website. And um, keep up the date with all the news, or go on our Twitter, which gets absolutely blasted daily by Subby. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. We well, uh, we shall see you next time. Thanks. Right, thanks. See ya. Thanks, guys. Bye. Over.